I've gathered hash rate and power consumption numbers for all the new NVIDIA RTX 4000 series GPUs on 17 different mining algorithms. And in this video, I want to look at two things. What is the absolute best RTX 4000 GPU for mining based on power efficiency? And also which one gives you the best value for money for mining in terms of hash rate per dollar spent when buying the card. And don't worry, in case you're new, I'll break down exactly what those terms mean and make them easy to understand. And now I know it might be tempting to just skip to the end of the video to see the results, but if you do, you might get a bit confused. So I'm gonna ask you here to please just let me quickly start the video off by explaining how the comparison works. Because if you do, you're gonna know a lot more what's going on so that you can make better decisions. And you know, knowledge is power right now some of you might remember I've recently made two videos pretty similar to this one looking at the Nvidia RTX 3000 series as well as the AMD RX 6000 series cards so this video will serve as a bit of an addition to those two I'll link them down in the video description below and I'd actually recommend watching all three videos if you want to get a full picture of the GPU market for mining right now so let's get into all of that after a quick word from our sponsor HeroMiners.com is a long-time trusted mining pool with support for over 17 different CPU and GPU mineable coins, including Caspa, Flux, Monero, Ironfish, Ergo, and Alephium, just to mention a few. And since the Ethereum merge, they've done everything they can to help you guys stay profitable, like doing multiple periods of 0% pool fees, regular giveaways and bonus events, greatly reduced parallel asset fees on Flux, 10 times faster ergo payouts than other pools, and just in general having really low and competitive pool fees for all of their supported coins. On top of this, they also have servers in 13 different locations around the globe to make sure you have a strong connection no matter where in the world you're mining from. Of course, they also have everything else you'd expect from such a high quality pool like nice stats and charts, ready-made bat files to help you connect your mining software to the pool, the option to choose between pool mining and solo mining, support for mining rig rentals and nice hash, the list goes on and on. So check them out at herominers.com or by clicking the link down in the video description. All right, so first off, I'm gonna put links to where you can buy all of the GPUs I'm gonna be talking about today down in the video description. And for full transparency, those will be affiliate links, which means that the channel does get a small commission at no extra cost to you if you do make a purchase through those links. And you guys using those links is actually a huge part of how I can even afford to keep making videos like these. So thank you very much. It actually does make a big difference. And yeah, it really does mean a lot to me. So thank you. All right, to start this video off, I actually have a confession to make here. At the time of filming this video, the brand new 4060 isn't available yet. I know, I know, I'm sorry, all right? I know I said that this video was gonna be for all 4000 series GPUs and then I'm skipping that one. So how about this? To make it up to you, I'll make a full dedicated video about the 4060 once it finally does come out which is probably actually by the time you're watching this video. And in that video, I'll of course compare it to all of the results for all of the other 4000 series GPUs from this video. So I promise to make that video and then maybe you promise to subscribe so you don't miss it. Is that a deal? All right, so let's move on to me explaining how I compare these GPUs and how to judge what GPU is actually best for mining. So as I mentioned in the intro, I've compared all of these GPUs on 17 different mining algorithms. And the reason for doing so many is, well, GPU profitability kind of moves around a lot in this current market. And what coin is the most profitable to mine could change on a daily basis. So you want to get a GPU that will be a good performer no matter what coin you try to mine on it. Another reason for comparing them on as big of an amount of different coin algorithms as possible is that there might be a new coin popping up. And if a GPU is a good performer on all 17 algorithms in this test, it's most likely also going to be a good performer on that new coin's algorithm, since it just seems to be an overall good performer, right? But what actually makes a card a good performer? Well, again, as I mentioned, I'm going to compare them in two different ways power efficiency and value for money. So let me jump into that first one, power efficiency. This basically means how much mining performance or hash rate do you get per watt of electricity consumed by the card? Obviously, you want this number to be as high as possible. You wanna get as much mining performance for as little power as possible. That's because in mining, power is the running cost that we have and the hash rate dictates how much coin we make. So we of course want to maximize the amount of coin we get 
per watt of power consumed. But we can't just look at the GPUs in a vacuum here, because GPUs do need full rigs to run, and those rigs do use a bit of power as well. The reason this is significant is because there is a limit to how many GPUs you can fit in one rig. And for this video, I'm gonna use this as an example. This is a full server case mining rig from Amazon. It's the best value GPU mining rig that I've found. It comes with everything you need, you know, except the actual GPUs, of course has space for up to 8 graphics cards and only cost $339. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll link that down in the video description as well, by the way. So, let's say the actual mining system without GPUs use about 80 watts of power. If you get GPUs that give you a hash rate of, let's say, 100 mega hash at 100 watts, then a full system would be 800 mega hash at 800 watts for the GPUs, plus 80 watts for the system, so 880 watts total. Now let's say there's another GPU that gives you a hash rate of 50 mega hash at 50 watts. On paper, you might say the power efficiency for both those cards is just as good. But if you want to build a mining farm that has the same hash rate as, you know, what we did previously, we'd have to build two full rigs this time. So that would be 16 GPUs to get that same 800 mega hash of hash rate and, you know, also 800 watts total in power for all of these GPUs. But we'd need to run two full rigs to fit all of those GPUs, which would be an additional 80 watts times two for a total of 160 watts plus the 800 watts of all the GPUs. So in the end, 960 watts. So as you can see, even though we had the same hash rate to watt ratio on those two GPUs, the more powerful GPU actually comes out on top in a real world scenario as it needs less mining rigs. Which, you know, also saves you money since you'd only need to buy one rig instead of two. More on that later by the way. But so, that's why in this comparison I've done a bit of clever math where instead of just looking at hash rate per watt for each GPU on each algorithm, I've scored every GPU between 0 to 100 in terms of real-world power efficiency. This also makes comparing performance between different algorithms much easier since they're all normalized to a score between 0 and 100. And something similar goes for the second thing I'm comparing these GPUs on, which is value for money. Basically, what I'm looking at here is how much mining performance do you get per dollar spent when buying the card. For example, disregarding everything else, if there are two cards that both cost $500, but one gives you 100 mega hash of hash rate and the other one gives you 200 mega hash, you'd obviously go for the one that gives you 200 mega hash, as it just literally gives you twice the hash rate per dollar spent. But again, we have to take the whole rigs into account here, because following the same logic as we went through with power efficiency, two cards with the same cost in terms of dollar per hash rate might still not be the same if one is a lot more powerful than the other in terms of hash rate. Because then you'd obviously have to buy less mining rigs to reach the same amount of total hash rate, which in reality is cheaper. So again, instead of just blindly scoring them on hash rate per dollar spent, I'm going to score them between 0 and 100 for each algorithm. Alright, so with all of that out of the way, let's look at our results after a quick word from our sponsor. Introducing the OctoMiner OctoTank 12 Home Immersion Cooling System. The future of cryptocurrency mining and home heating. Quiet, cool and efficient. The OctoTank 12 allows you to overclock your ASIC miners up to 70% to get more performance for your money. Compatible with up to two ASICs. Fully plug and play system. The immersion system ensures that your miners stay cool. Perfect for garage or basement heating. Up to 150 square meters of heating capacity. Clean and minimalist design. Fully weatherproof. Designed to last for years. Save money while keeping your home warm and cozy this winter. Order yours now. So here you have it. Hash rate 
power consumption and price for all the RTX 4000 series GPUs that are available at the filming of this video on all 17 coin algorithms that we're comparing. And I also threw the RTX 3070 in there as a point of reference as that is considered an almost legendary mining card at this point. And as you can see, we got the power efficiency score between 0 and 100 for each card on each algo and then the value for money or price score between 0 and 100 for each card on each algo as well. And before we look at the total results here, I just thought I should bring up some notable examples here. For example, on Caspa, the best efficiency and price score are both held by the 4090. And on Flux, the best value for money GPU in this comparison would be the 3070, but the best value for money 4000 series GPU would actually be the 4060 Ti, and the most efficient one would be the 4070 Ti. And then on a tried and true algorithm like CorePow, which is used by loads of different coins, the 3070 again offers the best value for money, but in terms of efficiency, it's actually a lot closer here, with the best GPU for this algorithm, the 4090, only being about 10% more efficient than the worst one, which is the 4070. But let's move on and instead have a look at the total result here. And what this is, is just all of the efficiency scores and price scores added up to create a total score for each card in each category. And I think to nobody's surprise, Basically, the lower tier GPU you go for, the better value for money it offers in terms of hash rate per dollar. With the 3070 being the clear winner, although that might be a bit unfair since the price I'm using for the 3070s is the second hand used price on eBay, while for the other cards I'm actually using the MSRP. But really, those are pretty much the prices you'd be able to find all the cards at anyway, so I don't know, maybe that is pretty fair after all. We do however see a bit of an exception to this curve though with the 4090 actually offering better value for money than both the 4080 and the 4070 Ti, which is actually pretty curious. Now, moving on to efficiency, it's clear that the 4000 series in general offers significantly better power efficiency than the 3000 series. And this comparison is even pitting them all against the 3070, which is generally considered the most efficient 3000 series GPU for mining. But we can also see that we do have two clear winners in the 4000 series here, the 4070 Ti and the 4090. And I think a lot of you probably already knew that the 4090 was a nice card for mining, but I think a lot of you might be sleeping on the 4070 Ti. I'll leave a link to this spreadsheet down in the video description, and if you click file, make copy, you'll be able to edit it and play around with it. Perhaps you have some of your own data you want to add or whatever. Also, please let me know down in the comments what you guys think about the 4000 series cards for mining. I know some people seem to really like them, but others think they're too expensive. So yeah, what are your thoughts? Let me know down in the comments.